Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So, in this video series, we'll be studying about the identification of bodily fluids. So, this is the first part where we'll be covering about blood, its identification, preliminary as well as confirmatory. So, these are the table of contents we'll be covering. Firstly, the introduction, then the biological properties of blood. We have already covered it very nicely in the previous two video series. We'll be just looking at a recap of this. Third topic is the biological composition of blood, then the presumptive assays, presumptive test as well as the confirmatory test. We will not study the presumptive and confirmatory test in this video, just we will be looking about how these tests are useful. Actual test we will be studying in the second part of it. So let's start, uh, let's begin. Blood is, uh, as we all are aware that blood is the most common evidence that is associated with the criminal investigation. We can say that it is most commonly encountered physical evidence at the scene of crime. So, to ensure whether the sample is blood or not, we have to confirm it. Then what we have to do? We have to carry out presumptive as well as confirmatory assays. Assays means examination. To confirm whether the particular stain that is found at the scene of crime is blood or not. So, what are preliminary or presumptive assays? As the name suggests, these are the generally used test at the scene of crime. However, a positive reaction in preliminary analysis shows only the possibility, not the confirmation of the presence of blood. So here you have to understand that preliminary test or the presumptive assays, these tests are also called primary test. They are only used to uh, gain a possibility that particular stain might be blood. Then only we'll be carried, we'll be carrying the confirmatory assays after that, so that we can confirm that the particular stain that is found at the scene of crime is blood. So let's see where these tests are used. So let's let's firstly discuss the biological properties of blood. So blood constitutes about eight percent of the human body weight of a healthy individual. Now, most adult human hemoglobin consists of four polypeptide chains. Now, we know that blood contains cellular portion as well as acellular portion. Here, we have to focus on the cellular portion. Cellular portion consists of uh, erythrocyte, which are the red blood cells, leukocytes, white blood cells and the platelets. We have to focus on the erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells for our preliminary identification of blood. So, let's focus on erythrocytes. Now, we all know that erythrocytes contains hemoglobin pigment, which is responsible for carrying oxygen throughout the body. This hemoglobin, it consists of four polypeptide chains. How many? Four. Two alpha chains are present as well as two beta chains. So, we can designate a hemoglobin molecule as alpha 2 and beta 2. You can understand this clearly in this diagram. This is an alpha chain and this is an alpha chain. Further, this is a beta chain, which is darker in color, and this is the beta chain. What is this? These are the heme moieties. Heme particularly has a major role in the ident preliminary identification of blood, so we'll be discussing it in detail in the next slides. So we can designate a hemoglobin molecule as an alpha 2 and beta 2, right? Now, each hemoglobin subunit consists of heme moiety. As you can look here, this is a heme moiety. It binds to the oxygen. So, whole of the heme molecule does not bind to the oxygen, only the heme moiety of the hemoglobin, it binds to the oxygen. Keep this in mind. So, a heme molecule consists of an organic component which is known as protoporphyrin 9. You have to remember this, this is very important. And a ferrous iron. Now, this heme moiety, if we enlarge it or we, if we take its structure, it consists of protoporphyrin 9 as well as ferrous iron. So, you can say that heme moiety consists of two major components, ferrous iron and the protoporphyrin 9. Right? Thus, a heme molecule is also known as ferroprotoporphyrin. So, you can say hemoglobin consists of heme moiety as one of its part, which is mainly composed of protoporphyrin as well as the ferrous iron. So, you can call a heme moiety as a ferroprotoporphyrin molecule also. Remember this, this is very important. It could be asked 
not directly because no direct questions are asked nowadays you could be given this name or and you have to uh, point out what particular this molecule is so you have to remember this this is a heme molecule it is also called ferroprotoporphyrin it is composed of protoporphyrin 9 and a ferrocyrin i hope this is clear very crystal clear for you let's move to the next part again this is the biological composition of blood we have covered it in the previous two video series very uh, thoroughly so we know that it has a plasma portion as well as the cellular portion cell plasma portion has majorly water and other salts and plasma proteins now you have to remember here that the portion of plasma if we remove clotting factors from the plasma what we remove we will be removing the clotting factors then it will be termed as serum right serum portion so this this is a major uh, basic concept you have to remember that if we remove the clotting factors from the plasma then the serum will be formed means serum is devoid of any kind of clotting factors Cl clotting factors in includes this fibrinogen and other factors which are responsible for the clotting of blood similarly the cellular portion consists of erythrocytes leukocytes and the platelets now i have i want you all to please comment uh, below the their concentration how much concentration of erythrocytes are present in the uh, blood as well as leukocytes and the platelets please let me know in the comment section below moving on further there are uh, we have to examine blood so there are basically two tests for blood identification the preliminary assay we have discussed earlier that it gives us the possibility that particular stain is blood or not and the confirmatory assay confirms as the name suggests it confirms the presence of blood so the preliminary assay they are carried out at the scene of crime we can detect a particular stain as blood or not itself in the crime scene with not confirmation just an identification it is quick sensitive and easy in seconds we get the result so uh, it is very quick and sensitive so uses simple color test which are basically based on the oxidation reduction reaction remember this the principle of preliminary examination is the oxidation reduction reaction you have to keep your concepts very clear so that you can understand everything uh, in a, a more clear way so this oxidation reduction reaction they are catalyzed by the heme molecule which we have discussed in the previous slide very clearly about heme but it has a disadvantage that it can give the false positive results due to major uh, factors and due to major reasons we'll be discussing in the next video when we'll be discussing about the preliminary examinations that are usually carried out on the blood now the second confirmatory assays they confirms the presence of blood it can be done on the lab we'll be needing a microscope to confirm the particular stain is blood so they are also called microcrystal assays why microcrystal assays because we can get microscopic crystals from these tests as results which confirms the presence of blood and it is conclusive in nature it provides a conclusive evidence that the particular stain is blood we can say it with confirmation so i hope this is clear that there are two pre uh, examinations that are basically carried out on the blood for its identification the first is the preliminary examination and the second is the confirmatory examination let's move further so let's discuss the basic principle of preliminary examination it is based on oxidation reduction reactions as i have told you earlier uh, in biochemical reaction oxidation often coincides with a loss of hydrogen so we have learned this in earlier classes that oxidation is the loss of hydrogen loss of hydrogen or the gain of elect uh, gain of oxygen as the name suggests oxidation right and its opposite will be reduction reduction is gain of hydrogen as well as loss of oxygen very basic so presumptive test are basically based on oxidation reduction reaction and uh, which is catalyzed by the heme molecule now heme is present in the hemoglobin and this heme is responsible for catalyzing the reaction in the presence of hydrogen peroxide as the oxidant or we can say it acts as an oxidizing agent oxidizing agent is that agent 
which helps the reaction to get oxidized or we can say that which reduces itself but oxidizes the product so heme is a catalyst now what is a catalyst catalyst are the substances that alters the rate of reaction basically it can alt it can increase the rate of reaction or decrease so without being consumed in the reaction so it is not consumed in the reaction it just increases or decreases the rate of the reaction so if the particular stain is blood then heme will be present in it and this heme will catalyze the substrate which is usually a colorless product colorless substrate into a colored product after oxidation it will be converted into a colored product with the release of water so in the presence of heme colorless substrate is oxidized yielding a product with a color chemiluminescence or fluorescence you can get a color or either get chemiluminescence we have discussed it very nicely in the previous video series where we where we were discussing about the chemical enhancement procedures of blood if you haven't watched that video please do watch it it is very much knowledgeable for you all it will clear your basic concepts of uh, chemiluminescence and fluorescence i've discussed very in a very detailed way the difference between these two terms so you can understand this more clearly here from this diagram that this is a substrate in the presence of hydrogen peroxide which acts as an oxidizing agent it oxidizes the substrate into a colored product where heme as a acts as a catalyst i hope this is very clear this is the basic principle of preliminary examination of blood so i hope this was all clear about basic uh, principle as well as the biological composition of blood as well as biological properties this was all about this video in the next video we'll be discussing about the actual examinations of the identification of blood the preliminary as well as the confirmatory examination so until then please stay tuned i hope you like this video for so you can share it with your friends and please do subscribe to this channel for more for more knowledgeable content thank you very much for joining